Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. then confess our sins to God our Father. Most Lord, merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your Paul, an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God.
The Old Testament lesson is recorded in the fifth chapter of the book of the prophet Amos. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs, to the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. 
Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Text for our meditation for this day is from the Gospel lesson from the 25th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, particularly these words of our Lord. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Those are the words of our text. Dear friends, Christ Jesus, our Savior, I'm sure that you would find it as no surprise at all that I've done a lot of weddings in my almost 50 years of the pastoral ministry. Of course, the truth is that there were many years where there were hardly any, and some, when there were none at all. But then again, there were those years, and your pastor knows it as well, when as soon as you turn around, what do you find? Couples to coordinate weddings with, going to wedding rehearsals, performing wedding services, attending wedding receptions. Well, weddings are joyous occasions, so that's not anything to complain about. They're intended to be fun for the bride and groom, obviously, but also for their family and for their friends. On the other hand, I've also found, and you probably have too, that it's really true if you've been to one wedding, you've been to them all. They all follow a very similar pattern and ritual. It begins, of course, with the wedding re rehearsal. And there are the people who are the attendants at the wedding. Many meet for the very first time. And then they have the rehearsal dinner. And then there's the decorating of the church for the wedding. And then the next day, there's the wedding itself with its special music, exchange of vows, exchange of rings, and what I can only describe as an endless round of photographs. <laughs> then there's the wedding reception, and it's pretty much true to form, too. There's the toast, there's the prayer, there's the meal, the first dance, the tossing of the bouquet and the garter, and then the event winds down and the guests leave one after another, wishing well to the bride and groom who are ready now to leave for their honeymoon. I was once asked at one of those weddings that I did, how many weddings I've done in my pastoral ministry? Now I have to tell you, I couldn't really answer that question. The fact is, two of the congregations that I served in my ministry have now closed their doors and the records, while they're still around, are no longer readily accessible. But I was able to look at the parish register at Redeemer Congregation and found that I had done well over 150 in 26 years at Redeemer Church. Some of those couples, of course, are easy to remember, but others have long since faded from my memory. But being a pastor who's officiated at hundreds of weddings, I can tell you that there's always a great deal of preparation that goes into getting ready for a wedding. And it matters not how many weddings I've done, there's one similarity in every last one of them. I can't remember a single wedding that I've done that ever started exactly on time. They always begin late, and the reason is always obvious to me. There's that moment when the pastor goes to the back of the church to make sure that the processional is about ready to begin, and then cues up the organist to begin that. But as he does that, he says it's time for the grandmothers and mothers to be seated. But that never happens on time because there are always still people waiting, waiting, standing around, talking, 
or those who have appointed themselves to be the ones who really run the wedding. <laughs> and it makes no difference if the pastor smiles, cajoles, suggests that it's really time to be seated. Those people won't be seated unless you physically push them through the door. <laughs> so the mothers can never be seated on time and therefore the wedding always begins late. Well, you know, weddings didn't take place in Israel in exactly the same way that they do today. And yet there were many similarities. There were attendants whose chief job was to see to it that the bride was ready and prepared for the wedding. There was a whole week of celebration of Jewish weddings. But unlike today's wedding ceremonies, no specific time was planned. The wedding celebration began when the groom, escorted by the bride's attendants, went to the bride's home to claim his bride and bring her to the new home that they would share as husband and wife. And since no one knew exactly the time or the day when that would happen, it was important for the bridal attendants to be ready at any time so that the festivities might begin. And the point of the words of this text is that of the ten virgins that we are told about who are the bride's attendants. Five were ready at the proper time, but five were not prepared and therefore not ready for the beginning of that wedding festival. And at the conclusion of this text, Jesus says, keep watch, because you don't know the day or the hour. The five unprepared virgins didn't know the day or the hour of the wedding celebration, and just so, we do not know. And therefore, many people are unprepared for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are certainly two types of people in this world. There are those who are ready for what's happening, and then there are those who will never be ready, no matter how much time they have. As members of the Holy Christian Church, we know certainly that our Lord Jesus Christ will return. He told his disciples he would come again, just as they saw him go into heaven. And ever after that time, there have been those in the Christian faith who thought the return of Christ would occur at any moment. And there are Christians all over the place who actually think that they can know and some even predict the day of our Lord's return. Obviously, they have never read scripture where Peter writes, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And we think of those people who are constantly calculating, predicting, have it nailed down the day that the Lord will return, and we think of them as kind of strange birds. But the Christians in the city of Thessalonica in Macedonia shared some of their opinions. They didn't want to miss the return of the Lord. So they quit their jobs. They were standing around in idleness, merely waiting for the second coming of Christ to happen. But on the other hand, there are a far greater number of people in our world who give no thought to it whatsoever. They don't think at all about Christ's return. And therefore, you can be certain that they spend no time and devote no attention to getting re themselves ready or preparing for it. And it is to that great majority of Christian people that our Lord is speaking in this day's gospel as he says, therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. The group of bridesmaids we hear about in this text were evenly divided. Five were foolish. They just decided that they could get ready when the call came out to get ready for the wedding. 
But the other five knew it was important to get ready, to be prepared, so that whenever the summons came, they were ready, they were prepared for that wedding. Well, you and I go to weddings from time to time, but we're not getting ready for a wedding. We're getting ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The foolishness of those five virgins who were unprepared was not to be found in the fact that they fell asleep. The wise virgins did that too. Everyone becomes tired and has to sleep. I know when the feet of my lazy boy goes up, my eyes go closed. <laughs> the foolishness of five of those virgins was to be found in the fact that they hadn't made the necessary preparation ahead of time. And as a result, they were running out of oil. You've probably noticed, as I have, that there's a different fashion in which men and women prepare for a wedding. Have you ever noticed that? The woman looks far ahead and looks through her closet. And if there isn't a dress that's appropriate for that occasion, she goes out weeks before and shops and shops and shops <laughs> and then eventually buys one. And she makes sure that there are shoes and purse that will coordinate with that dress. A day or two before the wedding, she will make sure that her hair is properly coiffed and that her nails are done. Now the male side of the ledger is quite different. They wait until about an hour before the ceremony to put on that dress shirt and tie, to look through the closet to find that suit that will be worn for the wedding, never even thinking that it might need to be cleaned or pressed. Both men and women prepare for a wedding, but one sex is far more serious and deliberate than the other one is. And so it is with Christian people as we prepare for Christ's return. There are some who take it far more seriously than others, and what this gospel is telling us is that we all ought to be more deliberate and circumspect as we look for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And how do we prepare for that? We're only two Sundays away from the end of the church year. That ought to give us reason to look back at the past 12 months of our Christian life. How often have we worshipped in our Lord's house? How often have we come to this altar rail or another to receive the blessed body and blood of our Lord together with the full and free forgiveness of all of our sins? How faithful have we been in our worship of the one who has given all of life and all of its gifts to us his people? If we ask those questions about our faithfulness, we find that all of those questions convict us. None of us have been as faithful as we should have been. There have been numerous weekends when we could have been at the Lord's house, but we allowed other concerns and commitments to distract us and to use that time that we should have devoted to the worship of our Lord. If we're preparing for our Lord, then it would seem obvious that we should pray to him. And there isn't a one of us here this day who would speak against prayer. We're all in favor of it. But how much time have we actually spent in prayer within the course of the last week? Have we sought the Lord's will? Have we surrendered our lives to his control? Have we thanked him for our salvation and the undeserved gifts that he has showered upon us on a daily basis? The answer, of course, is a resounding negative. We believe in prayer, but we've not taken advantage of our opportunities for prayer as we await the return of our Lord. So as we look at our prayer lives, 
there is much to convict us. We haven't taken advantage of that lifeline from the Lord. We haven't used prayer as a resource, resource to prepare for his return. How are we to prepare for our Lord? Certainly one way is by studying the word of our God, paying heed to the instruction he's given. We're called to live the Christian life right here in this world as we await the second coming. But what use have we made of that word? Once again, our lives indict us. We've not paid heed to the Lord's word. We've not taken advantage of the opportunities to study it with other Christians. And too many of us certainly haven't taken advantage of time, even within our own homes, to study that word. There's a saying among us that reads, when all else fails, read the instructions. And all the instructions we need to prepare for the return of our Lord are to be found in the pages of his word. But again and again, we failed the opportunities available to make use of that saving word. Our failure to make use of God's word convicts us. But don't miss the gospel in this text as well. There was no further opportunity for the five foolish virgins. As the wedding began, they were outside and they knocked on the door and they yelled, open the door for us. But the door was not opened. The only reply they heard to their plea was, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. There was time to prepare. But the foolish virgin simply frittered away that time instead of using it to get ready for that wedding. But of course, there is reason why this gospel is to be found within the pages of Holy Scripture. And there's reason why this gospel appears at the very end of our church year. That reason is that the door has not yet been shut. The Lord has not yet returned, and yes, there is still time to prepare. In his grace and in his mercy, our Lord gives us more time to get ready as we worship him, as we receive here his body and blood and the forgiveness of sins. There is still time for us as we draw closer to him in prayer, as we make use of the wisdom and comfort given us in his word. There's still time to get ready for the wedding and for the return of our Lord. But there's one thought we should not miss in this gospel. The return of the Lord is compared to a wedding feast. Like I said at the beginning, I've done many weddings and I've been to numerous wedding receptions. But I have never yet been to any wedding that was not a happy, and a joyous occasion. So our Lord promises to return and to claim us his bride, the church. But that will not be a day of sorrow or dread. That will be a day of great joy and overwhelming happiness. The triumphant returning Lord will come to claim us as his very own and to bring us to that banquet where the feasting will have no end, and where I like to think you can eat all you want and never gain a pound. <laughs> when will the return of our Lord happen? The Apostle Peter says the day of the Lord will come like a thief. We have no idea when it will be. But as we near the end of another church year, we can rejoice that the Lord gives us yet another more time to get ready for the wedding. Therefore, keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
will keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We rise as we join in confessing the Nicene Creed. Lord, you are our help and deliverer, and to you we bring the prayers and petitions of your people that you may grant to us all things good and merciful and guard us against all things evil and harmful. That the Lord would rule over the darkness and shine his light over all the earth, that those from many nations may be united as one people through baptism and live together in faith by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord would grant us wisdom and courage, that we may be prepared at all times to receive him when he comes in his glory, and that we may not be distracted by earthly glories that fade away or disillusioned by earthly disappointments which will come to an end. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord would give courage to all pastors as they preach and teach the word of the Lord. That all those who hear may believe, and that believing they may live in righteousness and godliness before the world, and be kept to the day when Christ returns as Lord and Judge of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That the governments of the world and our leaders would act justly and with mercy. That we may be spared war and violence and that we may use wisely and for the Lord's give glory his gifts of liberty and the abundant blessings he has poured out on our land. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord would give aid and comfort to the sick, the suffering, and those in their last days, that he may grant healing according to his will and strength to bear up under the weight of loneliness or affliction. We pray especially for Riley, Emma, Ann, Mila, Carl, Lincoln, Bill, Elaine, Ruth, Jim, John, Jeff, and Chrissy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may find a home within the house of the Lord here on earth, that we may rejoice in the Lord's word and sacraments by which we are brought to faith and nurtured in this faith, that we may be sustained in the days of waiting, serving the Lord in anticipation of his return. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord would prepare our hearts by his spirit for this holy communion upon the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and that we may keep in holy hearts 
and live out in holy lives what we have received here upon holy lips. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may be ready to receive the Lord when he comes again in glory, that the Lord may open the hearts of those who have wandered away from the faith, and that the Lord may restore those caught up in error's maze. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord may hear and answer the prayers of his people, and that we may be content with his answer, trusting in his fatherly will and wisdom to grant us all that we need and all that will profit our salvation. Let us pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord, God Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it 
gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and you're coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bless, strengthen, and preserve you in true faith until his coming again. pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord look upon you, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.